Hi, this is Tim. And I've had this question actually three times this week, and that is, what is a ferrule and should you use it? So first let's hit what a ferrule is. Ferrules are put on the end of wire, and their main purpose is to keep frays from one connection from going into the next connection. They're really useful where you have connections that are really tight. And I know you may be thinking, well, I'm neat. I can um, do this and not get any frays. But you also have to think about the next person who may be replacing a component. Are they going to be neat? So that, that's just a good way to do that. So to use a ferrule, strip your wire just like you normally do. There may be a specified length that's a little different for your ferrule. And you slide the ferrule on and then you crimp it just like that. So the main question that's came up is when are ferrules required and is there any disadvantage to using ferrules? Ferrules are not required, at least according to UL. So I went ahead and printed out uh, UL because I'm not real familiar with this one. So I will have to read this one off. 29.3.4 addresses ways that you can connect wires to terminals. And it says a connection method to a terminal for a component shall be made by A, wire inserted directly into a pressure wire terminal of a component. And that would be your typical screw terminal. So A, you can just stick the bare wire into the terminal. B, quick connect terminal of a component where the mating part is provided with a dimple depression or a spring type connection such that the mechanical snap action connection is made that does not rely solely on friction between the two parts. So that would be your typical spring terminal. So like be down here, we have these spring loaded terminal blocks. Crimped on pressure terminal connection with a closed loop eyelet. So that would be a ring terminal. Sorter terminal, and there's a whole different section just about sorter terminals. Wire binding screw, and it has its own specification. So binding screws would be like, uh, like our SIM ALP2, these uh, binding screws are the things you see on top of it. So here you can stick your screw into it and then tighten it down. An open eyelet, which it has its own specification. And then mainly, finally, we have G, which is wiring ferrule specified in 29.3.6. And what that says is a wiring ferrule shall be used with copper strand wires only. So you cannot use a ferrule with aluminum wire, at least according to UL508A. Terminated in a connector rated for copper wire and rated for the number and size of wires crimped in the ferrule. Now this is kind of an interesting thing. Uh, one, so the size, they are all color coded and each color typically is for a certain size wire. I'd always heard that you couldn't use these dual ferrules where you can stick two wires into one. But right there under B, it does show size of wire with an S in parentheses. So that tells me that these dual wire ferrules are okay for a UL panel. The big one that UL really is a stickler on, at least my inspector, is it's crimped with the appropriate tool as recommended by the ferrule manufacturer before terminating in the terminal of a component. So what that is saying is don't take and strip your wire, stick your ferrule on, and then shove it into a terminal and tighten it down to crimp it. You have to use the proper tool before it is put into the connection. That right there is it. Another thing about these while we're on this subject is there is a large variety of ferrule crimpers out there and you need to get one that is ergonomic because you're gonna be doing this all day. Even with an ergonomic one, as you get a little age on mainly you, not on the tool, your hands will hurt at the end of the day. So for example, I used to have a ferrule crimp tool was like this and this thing all day really kills your hands. So if you have one of these, throw it out and get you something like this. But the other big thing about what they're saying there is this needs to be recommended by the ferrule manufacturer. If I buy this ferrule crimping tool, but I'm buying ferrules that this manufacturer recommends, that will not meet the UL requirements. 
I uh, see there are two other things. Uh, D is sized in diameter appropriate for the number of wires and wire sizes as recommended by the ferrule manufacturer. That kind of sounds the same as B where it was mainly about the number of wires and the size of wires. I'm not exactly sure what the difference is, but mainly your ferrules need to be sized for the wire. And then here's another big one is crimped to the wires in such a length that the uninsulated portion of the wire does not result in a reduction in electrical spacings when the ferrule is installed. So for example, if I'm using this ferrule right here, which is about three eighths long of exposed conductor, I can't put this into something that requires one inch of exposed conductor. I would need a longer ferrule for that. The only other thing is there's a lot of discussion about whether your ferrule should have this insulated end on it or not. And UL does not say whether you should use a ferrule that has this little bit of insulation on the end or not. Personal preference, I like the um, insulated end. Other people don't like the insulated end. The biggest thing about the insulated end is you stick them in too far, you can end up clamping down on the insulation. But I think that's more of an install issue and I see a lot of problems with the uninsulated ones. But really, as far as UL, they're fine with either way. I hope that clears up some things about ferrules. Uh, I would say, especially on your panels that have higher densities of wiring, you should definitely use ferrules. You know, if you have a panel that only maybe has a push button on the door and a motor starter, it's not as important, but you should definitely have everything to do it. That way, if you're in a situation and you're like, hey, there's a lot of wires going to the one little area, then you can have your ferrules there and ready. So that's it for this video. Thank you to our patron supporters who made this video possible. Also, uh, during the month of September 2019, we are giving away an Allen Bradley Micrologics 1100 PLC. I'll put a link to the description where you can learn more about how to support the making of these videos and maybe have a chance to win an Allen Bradley PLC. Till next time. Hi, this is Tim. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Be sure to subscribe for more great videos. And like this video and comment on what you would like to see next. Visit our website where we offer a full line of PLCs, simulators, control panels, PLC trainers, and more.